see you, man. Good to see you. Too. How you been? Man, I just want to know. So you talking all this? You were drafted by the Cardinals. We want to know. Did you play for the Cardinals? Well, you know. Come on, I, Joe. Unfortunately, you know, the real world kicked in and uh, got injured prior mm -hmm. to the opportunity coming to fruition, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't get an opportunity to play. Did you have a backup plan when you got injured? No, I'm not gonna lie. Baseball was 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 what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a professional baseball player, and my my. Reasoning was maybe a little bit different than most. Mm. I wanted to be a, a mentor to kids. Okay. I wanted kids to look up to me when I said something. I wanted them to believe what I said, and I wanted to be an influence on kids. So when I played baseball, absolutely wanted the life of being able to live well, but more importantly, I wanted to be a positive influence on kids. Joe, there's a kid watching right now. All he's thinking of is the NFL, NBA, or Major League Baseball. Okay. How important is it for we as parents and mentors and educators to teach our children, hey, you have to have a plan B because very few make it to the league. Exactly. Uh, I mean, exactly. If you, if you know now what you knew then, what you knew now type thing, uh, we, we would obviously make sure that we, we let our kids know, which I'm a parent myself, mm -hmm. I make it very clear to them that options mm -hmm. is the spice of life. Mm -hmm. You gotta have options in this life and you have to educate your mind to be able to be clear on what your objectives are, love and realizing what it, exactly it is that you want your life to be about as you move forward. If you could go back and do it over, what would you have done different? Uh, I wouldn't have got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, would have, I would have found it to be, you know, clone myself and make sure that in case I got hurt, there was another person to carry on the objective. But no, more, more importantly, you know, I did go to college. Mm -hmm. I was educated to a point of you know, where I don't have the paper, mm -hmm. but I do have the information, the knowledge, and the understanding of what being a college student is about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was still able to carve away for myself uh, in life by, you know, just, just being able to move forward. Okay, Joe, so had an injury, was not able to continue your baseball career, went to college, then you became a police officer. Well, well, actually, I, I came on to policing to become a school police officer. Okay. Uh, I had a, a gentleman who was, a, who was a security guard at the school I went to, which was Crenshaw High School. Uh, he was like a big brother to me. And I, I really just admired his job. I admired the reality of being able to work with, with, with youngsters and kids and doing police work on a, on a school campus and helping and being a mentor to young minds. Mm -hmm. And that, that, uh, that sparked with me. And then ultimately it just came a situation where uh, after getting hurt, well, I wanted a career that, for one, I was local. Uh, I was doing construction work, and it, and that would have caused me to be all over the you know, United States, practically. And I wanted a job where I could stay local and be around family and friends and that type of thing. And, uh, you know, I remembered, uh, you know, uh, Adam-12 and, <laughs> <laughs> and Drag Mid and right, uh, right. Starskin Huts and stuff. So... I honestly had always had a slight infatuation, but you know, I didn't really know what was coming. And also you were a bodyguard to some of the, the, the biggest in the industry. Who were so Jay Z, Damon Dash, Johnny Depp, Magic Johnson. Man, what was that experience like? Well, you know, it, it was a byproduct of, you know, having the police experience. Um, I was able to carry gun. I was able to uh, you know, protect people and, and be frustrated in that in that arena. Uh, and yes, it was it was very it was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed uh, protecting people. Any close calls? Uh, would you, know you take I, a bullet, Joe? Yes. Come I'm on, gonna, Joe. I'm going to say that because I'm still <laughs> in the profession. Yeah, yeah. I will. I, I, you know, of course, my clients were, were mm -hmm. are very much significant mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I hold it, I hold it dear to make sure that whoever it is that I'm protecting. Author, first, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank Takes you a lot much. of work writing a book. The book is called The Tragic Life of a Black L.A. Cop, Truth for Change, Riots, Injustice, Perez, Reform, PTSD. Well, you know, being honest with you, the book uh, was, was something that I, I was going to do 20 years ago. Mm. And, and honestly, during that time, the climate was just not uh, kosher for me, one, to do it because of the emotions attached to writing. Well, it just wasn't a good climate to write a book. Uh, 
uh, you know, kind of speaking on matters and issues as it pertained to the police. Mm -hmm. uh, just wasn't comfortable doing it. Um, and, I, and I psychologically, being honest with you, was not at a place where I could pain was still so deep inside me that I could not. You had to heal first. I, I, had, I couldn't write it. I couldn't write it early. So, you know, with all the circumstances that have transpired, the, the injustices and the deaths and, you know, repeated issues, it just got to be a place where, you know, I was able to get it out. Will it ever Never stop? Um, you know, I, I think as long as there's people who have ill hearts and there's good and bad in the society and the world in general, uh, we're always going to have some issues. Um, but I think that what we can do is, um, you know, put some legislation and laws and different things in place in a very, very uncomfortable system who wants to partake in these type of egregious uh, behaviors. What kind of feedback are you getting on the book? Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I feel I feel good. Um, good. Uh, people are giving me a very good response in regards to the contents. And uh, I think a lot of people <laughs> didn't realize I had actually experienced the things that I experienced in my life. They didn't realize what I had been through. How can we secure a copy? Um, you can either go, to, I, I created a, a basically a movement behind it. So I have a website okay. that's called truthforchange.life. And that's the word truth, the number four, the word change, and then dot life. Can they follow you on Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Truth for Change. <laughs> you know, you can hunt me down. Um, I'm there, just, you know, look me up. And, um, you know, there's there's different ways. I'm a Googleable person. Hey, everybody. Yeah. This is author Joe Jones. Congratulations on your book. Joe, I was wondering, do you think I can get an autographed copy to take back home to Texas? Now, that wouldn't be a good look if I said no. Oh, oh right, right, right. So, right. So, right. So, right. Okay. Joe is a promoter, but he also wrote a book uh, because he's a cop. He was a cop, and he wrote a book about what it's like, Dave, to to be a cop, on, you know, an LAPD cop. Uh, let me see. I thought I got a, a picture of his book. I think that's it right there. Yeah, and that couldn't possibly be him unless that was 40 years ago. Anyway, Joe Jones, the tra the tragic life of a black LA cop. Now, before we even go there. You know right away, we saying, don't nobody give a damn about no tragic life or no black cops. The way cops are treating people, black and white, who don't nobody give a damn? Anyway, I figure he's probably got a heck of a story. So let's find out. Plus, he's a good dude, man. We go way back. And, and he's helped me. He put me on programs when he's producing stuff. So I do want to hear the story. His name is Joe Jones. And let me see. I'm going to move that and see if I can move him on. Ladies and gentlemen, get your hands together. If you're at home and you got your liquor store hat on, even if you're sitting on the bed, butt naked, uh, drinking uh, uh, a Starbucks and eating a biscuit, let's get your hands together for our man, Joe Jones. Come on, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey. What's up? What's up, baby? Look Thanks you, for having you, me. You filling that camera up. Look at you. You know, <laughs> you, know you. You were telling me that I would remember you. And I said, well, I see your face. I would know whether I know you or not. And I saw your face. And I was like, yes, I know you, brother. How you been? I've been blessed, man. Blessed be, be, beyond the circumstances. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. I'm glad that you worked it out uh, and got the machine to work. You know, because you yeah. came up late, really. And by the time yeah. you came, I couldn't help you work it out. I'll move <laughs> it on. But your butt stayed up. So I love I mean, that. That's another that's thing. Bad. Go ahead. I said, that's how bad I wanted to be on your show, baby. Oh, I had to make it happen. <laughs> and the, less, the lesson in that is you got to show up. You know, yeah. showing up is 90% of it, you know, of success in life. It's just showing up. <clears throat> so tell me about this book. Uh, well, basically, it was, it was birthed from my experience as a police officer. Uh, I, uh, I, I got on the police department to be a school police officer, ultimately, I was a real police officer, and I found myself involved in circumstances that I had no idea that were going to occur. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the bottom line was, was you know, hey, I'm in the middle of a situation, and uh, you know, honestly speaking, it was overwhelming. Uh, and, and the truth of the matter today is that people need to look at uh, the situations that occur with a black officer, so we can have some mm -hmm. sense of barrier to be able to fix things. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense for one of their own to go through the things that I went through. So you know how the citizens are probably being treated. You know what I mean? Well, what, what? Well, tell me. What were some of the things you went through? Ah, man. It's, it's go, it goes on and on. You know what I mean? But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know there were actually killings. There were, uh, you know, there were situations where testimonies changed in court. Uh, there were situations where, you know, people who I knew very well were one way in the beginning, and then they ultimately changed changed on me. And, you know, it was just overwhelming to recognize the politics that occur, the racial politics that occur on a job like this. You know what I mean? And you just never, you never so, imagined it. So when you were with your white, um, did you roll with white part and a black part? I mean, of course, you, you roll with everything. You roll with all colors. So, so, so if you come to a situation, because we were talking about this last week in this book called Niggerable Offenses. I'm trying to see if I have one with me. Niggerable Offenses, where this brother was saying something's a niggerable offense, and one thing that we found to be a niggerable offense is if a black cop is there with his white buddies and they beating the hell out some helpless brother and the and the black cop don't help him, you know, or don't stop the white guys, that that's a niggerable offense. My question to you, and this is a tricky one, have you been in one of them situations where the white cops are stomping down a brother and you there too and you don't help or don't say, hey, man, cut that out? Have you been in that situation? Hell no, that's why I wrote a book. That's oh, okay. Why I wrote a book. <laughs> 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 now, you know, keep it keep it at one hundred. You know, I I I, uh, I had a low tolerance for that. You know, that type of stuff. And truth mm -hmm. be told, you got to understand. You know, most times, if there's some wrongdoing towards a, a black person, and they're with another black person that they know is a stand up guy, they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna do certain stuff. But mm -hmm. there were circumstances that I had to to you know be involved with that you know were were you know, life-changing situations because I I stood up as a man and was like, no, nah, that, you know, that's not the way, that's not cool. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't the way it's supposed to be done. You know, so that ultimately led basically to a lot of circumstances that I had on the job just by being, being you know, man enough to stand up and say something about situations that I, that I was so in front of. So when did they fire you? I never, I was not fired. <laughs> I was joking. I was joking. Stop that. <laughs> Okay, so so how long were you with the police force? And let me say, if, if Nukum is ready, you're gonna be up next, okay? Just shake your head because I can see you. Nukum, you up next? Yes. All right. So 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 how long did you work with the police? I was I was with the police department from 1989 to 1998. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it was about nine years. And and, and tell me, what's the, the thing you learned? What was the the most important thing you learned and that we'll probably learn from your book. Yeah. Well, well being honest, the most important thing I learned that, you know, the, the bureaucratic system of justice is not equitable. It's not equal to, to all. Uh, there's a different law and structure for blacks and there's a different a law and structure for whites. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. the reality that, you know, when somebody who does not look like you is brought forth on a situation, is not going to be the leniency and the understanding and the consideration that you would have for someone that's your same same ethnicity or color. It's mm -hmm. just unfortunate, and I didn't make it that way, and I hate that it's that way, but it, that just seems to be the way it is. Yeah. So what did you get from it that can help you enhance your life? What did you learn being part of that that helped you make the rest of your life better? Well, you know, First off, going through it and then writing and then, you know, the pain that I went through in terms of having to be resilient, having to be a fighter, having to learn how to still love your kids, having to still learn how to be a breadwinner, having mm -hmm. to learn how to still continue uh, your life and have a major, major situation behind you that's absolutely overwhelming and stressful. Uh, it taught me resilience. It taught me to stand up and be a man regardless of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to this day, uh, you know, this book is, is basically another uh, a hurdle in terms of basically saving my life and giving me a chance to get back on track in terms of being the person that I that I was before I came on that job. OK, so so how people get this book? Uh, I have uh, two different 
locations you can go to uh Joe Jones the Arthur dot com. Joe Jones or you can Wait, that's, that's one right. good thing. That's one good thing that came from being a cop. It turns you into an author. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. And then and then there's truth and then the number four change uh dot mm -hmm. life. Truth for change dot life. And that's part of uh the platform that I've created. And I'm really just trying to offer a resting place for people who may have had some bad experiences, you know, some racial circumstances, with no, with no matter who it was, and give you a, a place to go and get to a place of understanding, you know, we that we have a responsibility as well when we're confronted with situations. And I and I try to uh, relay the message to our people that, you know, hey, to try and fight the police or be aggressive or be angry and hostile when you're confronted with a situation is not the answer. Uh, you got to be poised, you got to be in control, and you got to live to see the next moment. Uh, and once you live to see that that moment, then you put forth whatever complaint or issue you have with the way you were treated. But to try and fight the police or be aggressive and, and, and you know, do all that at that time is, is not a good look. It's not a good thing for you. Here's another thing. I'm hoping you co-sign this. I mean, uh, running is crazy. Running from the police is crazy. My friend Greg McKinnon did a photo shoot of me in uh, Jacksonville this weekend, and he told me the story of his friend who's 38 years old who jogs. And he was jogging, and he jogged past a police cruiser. They chased him down, shot him in the back and in the head, and killed him. And my first question was, why did he run? If the police are coming and saying, Paul, are coming... Why do you keep going? Oh, well, you know, he was probably strapped. I said, okay. But even if you're strapped, it's better to stop and give up your gun than to run and give up your life. And almost every situation where we get killed, we run from the police. And I keep telling most police, you know, a little overweight. I ain't trying to say nothing about you. I'm just saying most police, and they already be then they got a, a, a belt on it weighs 37 pounds with all the, the pistols and the stuff. If they got to run and catch you, they're going to make an example of you or maybe kill you. So the worst thing we could do when the police come is run. Stop. Calm down and find out what it is they need from you. You minimize the damage that way. And that's what I think. I, 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 second, your, I second your motion. Absolutely. To run is definitely a detriment. Of the, there's the assumption of guilt. There's also the adrenaline and fear of an officer that's chasing you that has no idea why you're running. And you're right. A gun is probably one of the things they think about. They, they think about, you know, am I going to survive this situation or whatever the case. And then they also think about the fact that they want to stop you from doing whatever it is that you were doing. And, you know, and, and they know they can't catch you. So it's just how they value your life. We know for a fact it's ridiculous to thought of shooting a man in the back, you know, for a situation, you know. And, so, and see your concern for your safety. Plus, running is not evidence of guilt. Running is evidence of fear. That's all. You know, a dude take off. He's going to pull me, take, take off. I ain't taking off. I don't care if I get a pistol in a, box, a pocket full of dope. I ain't out. I ain't running because it's hard to outrun a bullet. And, you know, I'm being a senior citizen and all. Anyway, I went way over your time. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, need to, I need to jump off. Once again, tell people how they can reach you. Yeah, once again, uh, truth for change, uh, the truth for ch truth for change dot life. And then and Joe number Jones, four. You Joe, said the number Joe, four. The number four, yes. Okay, truth for change. And then, and yes. And then uh, Joe Jones, the author dot com. Uh, okay. I'm on Instagram, of course, Mr. Joe Jones. Mr. And then I forgot, I forgot to mention, of course, I'm on all platforms, you know, your Amazons and all the other uh, typical locations where you can find the book that's online. And, uh, you know, hey, I'll be around the city. People know me. They know how I get down and I'm accessible and it's all love with me. You know what I mean? It's good to see you again, Joe. You're a big dude. So can you leave us with a big woo, woo, woo? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Mr. and friend like to welcome the Arthur, Joe Jones. Give it up for him. Let me see that book so I can show some of my viewers and things what we got here. You're going to present it to me later, but I like him. He's 
Keith here today in the studio live. This is his book I'm going to talk about. And then we're going to tell y'all how y'all can get this book. Thank you. So, 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 Joe, tell us, all right, you know what I mean? Um, what is the book about that made you, you know, feel like, is that about you? Yeah, it is. It is my life story. Oh, oh, your life story? Yeah, pretty much from my time uh, being a police officer. Yeah, I, I worked in the area at Wilshire Division. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a good friend of mine. So, mm -hmm. man, this is amazing. Let's give it up again. So, man, we're going to really get some good news around here. I so, um, that. LAPD, uh -huh. Wilshire District. I'm sure you know you experienced a lot. I remember the time when uh, one of y'all very own y'all was looking for uh, the gentleman that they uh, caught up in uh, Big Bear. Yeah, Dorner, so, Christopher Dorner. Yeah, you yeah. right. You remember that? I absolutely remember. Yeah, very yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So you was on the force during that time. Yeah. Well, no, I was. I was no longer a police officer at the time it happened. Okay. But uh, when he started doing what he was doing, you know. It, Brought, it yeah. brought a lot, of, a yeah. lot of issues towards me because I felt like yeah, this brother's out here killing people uh, for things. And I felt like I had some experiences that were similar in nature to what he experienced. And or, I, wanted to see if I, could, I wanted to see if I could stop the dude from doing what he was doing, being honest with yeah. you. So I wrote, I wrote a second manifesto yeah. to try and stop him from doing what he was doing. Okay, yeah. so uh, we're here. What we're you talking about? The book or... You know, because I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited I'm, and I'm yeah. thankful that you're here. And I, you know what I mean? I'm sure we got LAPD, everybody watching and everything. Yeah. Talk to us about some of this California police thing. Then, yeah. You know what I mean? Share what you want to share. We want to yeah. hear your opinion. Well, I went to your site. You had some stuff about the Rodney King. So you was on the police force at the um, time as Rodney yeah, King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, being honest, I was, a, I was a police officer doing, the, you know, most of the more newsworthy circumstances that happened throughout for the last 30 years. So I was I was involved with the LA riots. I was involved with the OJ Simpson crime scene. I was involved with um, you know killings and a police officer killing other officers and um, you know just a whole lot of scandalous things that occurred and you know just you know, so your stuff book that is a tell all. Well, it, it's not it's not so much about tell all than it is about me extracting the pain that I had inside my chest yeah, and, yeah. and putting it out here on paper versus having it living inside of me, causing me not to sleep, causing me anxiety, right. causing me. It yeah, it, it caused lot. me a lot. Yeah, it caused me a lot of issues. And so then, I had to get it off. And then you, 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 you feel more like this, like they just push you onto the curb and you still had all that so much and then you seen so many similar while others stepping up and you didn't. Now mm -hmm. you want to get this off your chest. Yeah. Well, yeah, talk you know, to I, I, I try. I, I honestly stepped up at the time things were happening, and I was being real about it. Okay. And that's where I got ostracized on the job. You know what I'm saying? So when, when things happen and you don't go along with the flow, see, now you're caught up in a situation where they think that you're a problem, or so right. to speak. When, in fact, you know, the last thing I was trying to be was a problem. I actually enjoyed being a police officer and doing police work. And I actually don't think every one of them is bad. I just think that there are those chosen few that do what they do. So, uh, you know, by either black or white, was you mistreated as an officer? Or, you know what I mean? You, was you, you know, some things you really know that they were doing to you that they shouldn't have been doing to you? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, it, it's definitely it's a lot of stories in the book that's going to say that. But it, absolutely, I experienced uh, some things that were, were, were absolutely unnecessary. Terms of, you know, talk about it. What is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, whatever I mean, you, you know, can I had, share. I had, I had, you uh, know, and, and you know, whatever in the book that yeah, you got right. shared yeah. with us and yeah. our viewers. I mean, yeah. you know, it's an honor, and, and it's yeah. good that we can get this close insight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well it's just it, you know, you know, like it's so many things. You know, in terms of me de de deciding which thing to talk about, it's like you know, I had uh, a situation where my home was shot up. Wow. Okay. And um, after my home was shot up, I had, um, you know, a, 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 a while where I wasn't staying at my house. I had to stay different places because I didn't right. know what, what was going on. Where it was on. coming from. So the types of things that they do is here it is. I'm in that situation 
and you, it, there's no way anybody can really digest what that could feel like. Right, but then I had a, a, a I had I had a, a circumstance where I missed court because of that because I they know, couldn't get in contact with me because I wasn't staying at home. I know, what and they mean. gave they gave me a suspension for that. Mm. Now, how can you knowing suspend me situation. knowing my situation? Yeah. Right. And it's just it's just that you know there's no sensitivity there. There's no understanding until it's one of their own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I felt yeah. like at every opportunity they have to ostracize the brother or do somebody, you know, some type of way, right. they exercise. It. They take advantage of it. But then you see when it comes down, if it's a white officer, things could be a little bit different. It's it help It's handled a little bit with a little more leniency. A little more leniency. Yeah. You know what I mean? With a brother, mm -hmm. they, they going at you, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, so you and, deal with a lot of racism? Yeah, I dealt with a lot of racism. I dealt, I dealt with a lot of racism. It, it, what's, what's funny is the place that you, that you would think that I would have dealt with the most racism was during probation, and I was way out in the valley. I worked out in the valley. Yes, I did experience a couple racial situations, mm -hmm. but they were nothing like the drama that I dealt with once I came in the inner city and worked amongst you know, wow. people in my community and my area, which is where I wanted to be. I came on to be a, be a police officer. You know, because I wanted to help my people and people in my area. Yeah, you know I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah. So once you get there and you find out, man, it's very difficult for you to have any control, attraction in regards to what takes place. That you thought you, know, you would you have. You thought you could do. But yeah. You, you, you but, can't do it. And you. like you said, it's an individual. They more can have a day way yeah. and less recommend. But any little thing you do right away, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You penalty for it. Exactly. Right exactly. Right up to, you know, and you know that. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's a real uncomfortable feeling to be in an organization where you're working. And here it is. You got, you got to be out here for one. You got to protect yourself. You got to make sure you make it home every night. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, to have all the things happening, um, you know, whereby they're eat any little thing happening, they're, they're coming at you. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, it was just a vicious cycle of incidents after incidents happening. And, you know, like I could say I could talk about certain stuff, but it's wow. at the end of the day, you know, I put that's why I put it in the book. Yeah. So I don't have to yeah. talk yeah. so much. You know what no, I'm saying? No, I understand, but it, it's so important to, <laughs> yeah. like you said, to get it off your chest, exactly. you know. And when we're here like sponge is soaking it all up. Yeah. About I mean, what yeah, year I, was that? So we can picture what well, we Well, I was, know. it was, when I was, I was in, I was a policeman from 89, to 90, about 98. And what made you want to become a police officer? Well, you know what? Well, he said earlier he wanted to help people. Well, no, well, no. Nah. That community. ain't why I did it. <laughs> well, I know it's really for the money. I wanted I to eat, dog. Uh, yeah, no, you just, know, a lot of I, benefits. Being, they being honest, I got on the police department to work for the school police department because I had like a guy, like a big brother to me that worked for the school police. And, you know, I just thought that was a real cool job yeah. to be able to work with kids, work yeah. out of school, be able yeah. to individually help kids and yeah. direct him because he directed me you know he had my back when so i was a young dude yeah. you know so i wanted to come back and yeah. be that same guy for another for another, another group of kids kid. coming up right. but once i got on the job and you go through all this training and academy and you learn all the things that you learn i mean i didn't want to come back and just deal with kids after all the stuff that i learned you know what yeah. i mean so i was on the job and i stayed on and you know, um, and that was that i mean i was working towards you know just trying to have a long career just like anybody else and you know, unfortunately, things happen. And if it, 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 it uh, shortened your career, forced you out of that. Well, you know, it was it was a it was like I said, it was a bunch of different things back to back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm talking about from shootings to killings yeah. to people, uh, you know, conspiracies against you yeah. when you have nothing but good will in your heart to help and to love and to be a part of. Mm -hmm. You know, just just looking out for the folks in the in the, in the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you find yourself with your back against the wall, and you haven't asked for it time and time again, it's like, wow, maybe this environment is just not for me. You know, at some point. You know what I mean? So you said you, you, Rodney King uh, during that time you was on the force, yeah. and the O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Uh, d tell us something. I was Did in you... the O.J. crime scene. You I were... was there. I saw the blood and. I was so there when it happened. Add, and, add in yeah. the extra blood drops, the evidence, and all yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I wasn't there. I don't know nothing about no blood drops and you know, all that. <laughs> yeah. I was there. I saw all the blood. When I got there, I worked you the, same on the same You were on the same. Yeah, I, I got there probably 10, 15 minutes.
before they, you know, after they took the bodies away, and I was protecting the crime scene and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. So I didn't, I didn't uh, see the see the no, bodies no, per no, se, but, yeah, but I, I saw you, it was yeah. just ridiculously bloody and gory and terrible. So you were in a high saying? position. No, I was a regular mm-hmm. police officer. But you were oh, how could you be regular? But you're you're not regular. High you're profile. extraordinary. Yeah, well, you have a special you. calling for you. Thank for you. you. I appreciate that. You, you, well, you, you could you could yeah. you could be that. And have that, and that's yeah. what he was trying to get him to really recognize yeah, of calling. that. Yeah. But then, you know, it's just like you know you feel now about police officers when you think that they pulled to serve and protect. He went in there thinking this was all with the sorority, we all to make it happen. But you get there, it's really completely a different thing. Yeah. So on the Rodney King thing. How 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 was the vibe in the department after that job? Wow. Between um, the black I mean, it was, and white. You know, it, it was a uh, it was literally like you know you just know that. I mean, bottom line, the white officers went with the officers, and the black officers went with Rodney King. Period. You know, we and don't and, and don't get it twisted. Yes, there was definitely a white officer that didn't feel good about that, of course. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, um, people just have that. You know, we just, I think it's a stigma in society. We have a, a notion to protect our own, so to speak. You know, whether they thought, you know, he was right or wrong, they look at Rodney King like, you know, oh, it's just so, he was just an old drunk, you know, yeah. drunk dope head, dope head dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they didn't have, they, they had the mentality probably to think like, oh, well, he probably deserved it. You know what I mean? That type of mentality. So here it is, are we going to sacrifice four police officers for, for just the old common dude who's been yeah. arrested a thousand times, right. you know, but they don't get the reality that That's they, you know, they you're, not paid, it, yeah. you're not paid to come out and scrutinize and, and decide who's supposed to go to jail and right. who doesn't. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to, when the time comes and they co- you know, commit the crime, then you do what you got to do to arrest them and take them to jail effectively in the right way and not go overboard with the, well, with the process. That, with the um, Floyd incident and you being a police officer, are you guys trained to put your knee on them? Is that part of your training? Or? Well, well, when you're, when you're, you know, in, in part of the process of you taking somebody into custody, right. and just and mind you, let's let's keep this one hundred. Right. The tactics and the and what's legal now versus what was legal when I was a policeman okay. twenty years ago okay. may have changed in terms of the rules and how you get down, yeah. right? But you know, if you're in a situation where you're trying to take somebody into custody and they're fighting and they're doing what they're doing. Yes, you can put your knee on them until you get them under control. Okay. Now, once you get them under control, you got them here in handcuffs, and you got three other officers there. There's absolutely no need for you to have your knee on someone's neck. You know what I mean? And as far as I was concerned, I just felt like they should have uh, done everything they could do to either let this man get, you know, get on a knee or sit down or whatever. You just don't get on top of people. That's crushing their, their, their ability to breathe. They can't well, breathe. Well, it, 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 it's why I guess it was showed it was totally disrespect. It was, you know, totally himself and wasn't about the law or anything. You know what I mean? That, that, was, a, in the, that was individual hate. Yeah. That was a person who individually hated yeah. somebody, and I think that that was perpetuated before that even incident even yeah. occurred because, because he they, did know him. Yeah, because yeah. they did security work at the club exactly. and all that. Exactly. You would think if you were pulling like, man, you work together, you see me, you'd be saying, look, Bishop, get on over there, man. What you mm-hmm. doing here, man? What's yeah. going yeah. on? Yeah. Not I wouldn't take grudge at you and yeah. do all that he did, yeah. you know, but yeah. that I guess, you know, like you said, that was sort of a grudge thing, though. Yeah. So is that book for me? Yeah, that's. I bought you a book, baby. Yeah, can I, I have it? I, absolutely. So, and I'm so, sign it for you. Well, I just wanted to make right, you know Would who you I was tell the people to. how they can get it or something? You got this, uh, my camera too. Okay. All these yeah, cameras. I don't know. I don't know what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, wherever okay. you at. Man, I've been ignoring. It just mine's on you too and everything. You got to tell me that. Yes, oh everywhere. Yeah, but no. Um, the book is honestly, it, it, uh, it. You can achieve it. You can get the book on my website. That's the best way to get it. And the website is. Uh, it's, it's two different options. One is joejonestheauthor.com, joejonestheauthor.com, or you can go truthforchange.life. And Truth for Change is the platform that I'm developing in regards to helping heal people who've gone through traumatic situations, police brutality, racism, and what have you. It's like an arresting place for people to go. And it's a, it's a steady work of, work 
of art at this point. I'm working on it consistently right now. But you can buy the book there, and that's the only place you can get it and then get a, a signed copy. You know what I mean? Other than that, you go through Amazon and all that. They'll charge you the same pretty much price, and you'll get the regular regular book with no extras or whatever the case. But then when you go to the site, you'll be able to see a lot of the stuff that I've created in order to give people who've been through. It's just like everybody has been stopped by the police. Everybody has had a bad situation. I'm sure everybody here has gone through something where they felt like the police tried to dominate them or make them feel some type of way when it just wasn't necessary. You know what I mean? So I just try to, I'm just trying to provide a place where people can go and maybe read something to make them feel a little bit better. And could you tell us the name of your book? Can you tell them the name? Because they might not catch it. Okay, the, na the name of the book is, uh, let me see. Okay. Now, sure. The Tragic Life of a Black L.A. Cop. Okay, and then it's Truth for Change, which is the by you know the second second name, the tragic life of a black LA cop, and uh, you know I just being honest wanted people to understand what the reality is. I mean, people look at police like like they ain't got no feelings, like they just some animals or some shit. You know, people have you know police officers have feelings just like anybody else. And what I want to impress upon in being from the optic that I have, I'm 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 from the streets, bro. I came from LA. You know what I mean? I yeah. went to Crenshaw High. You know Lee Mack? Yeah. That's my cousin, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got, you know, I had pimps that was cousins. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had pimps that was gangbangers I, I, I and went everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, at the end of the day, though, you know, I had a notion and a desire to, you know, be on the other side, too, to see what I can do to help or whatever yeah. once I was in there to be a, a righteous figure within that process. You know what I mean? So, you know. Once again, I mean, I, you know, I, I want everybody to know that, yes, there are some terrible cops out there, and we all know it. Yeah, it but there are, some cop, there are some police officers that show up every day and simply want to do a good job, treat people with dignity and respect, and, and go home. They just want to make it home safe like everybody else. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes if you think somebody's ordering you around or moving you around, sometimes that's for their safety. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you, know, you can't take every situation as bad. I, I, I'm trying to teach people to learn how to co cooperate. Just cooperate with the situation. And then once you get to a place where it's handled and their threat level is down, yeah. then if you have a problem, you, you make a complaint. But don't try to fight the police, bro. Right. You're going to get your ass whipped. You ain't going to you know, win. You're gonna, you, you're, there's no win in that. You know what I'm saying? Win. So, they kill it, man. Hey, he's telling y'all some good stuff. Don't fight yeah. with the police because yeah. you can't win, man. Yeah. And, it, you know, and, it, and it's not... You know, I'm just saying, you know, and, and our people, we got like, we got a lot of pride, we got a lot of heart. We don't want nobody talking to us any kind of way. Right. I'm like you too. I don't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's, from the street, that, that, and, and see, the honestly, street. that's why I'm not there no more. I don't, yeah. I don't do well with that, right. you know, but at the end of the day, we have to know when we can win and when we cannot win. You know what I mean? Well, and, they, you know, you told them right, right there. Um, mm -hmm. Don't fight the police, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, Joe, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. But yeah. I definitely want to have you back, man. You got yeah. some interesting stuff to talk about. And yeah. we'd like to have you back I'd again, man. I'd love to be man. back. Thank you for hey, buddy, y'all go out and get that book and everything, you know what I mean? And that is amazing to have you on. Let's give it up for Joe John. Man, it's good to have an officer to come on yeah, to tell it like it is. Yeah, we that Yeah, man. We definitely want to have you well, back, then, you know, man. Yeah, that knee ain't you know what I mean? Hey, you say you're building something. We'd like you to come back this time and time to tell about it. And, yeah, I and appreciate you know, that. your organization I appreciate that you're that. putting together. You know yeah. what I mean? And just so you know, on the site, I offer an opportunity for people to make donations. Uh, and I'll also either Cash App or the donation portal that I have and the bottom line is, is that I have accepted this as part of my lifestyle it's yeah you tell them how they can reach out to do all well that? it's on that website it's oh on that okay website when they go there they the can truth. see all of that yeah truth for change the truth for change dot life or uh, joe jones the author dot com 